fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One, Silver. Let go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Away. Dan Reed, 14-year-old nephew of the Lone Ranger, had left the camp and had started for the nearby town of Greenville. He had pulled his horse, Victor, down to a walk, and as he neared a bend in the trail, he was startled by a distant scream. Golly, that sounded like a woman screaming. Come on, Victor! As Victor raced around the bend, Dan saw a team hitched to a buckboard racing across the prairie away from the trail. A woman was pulling frantically on the range. The team's running away. Maybe I can stop them. Come on, Victor. Come on, fella. Help me. Help me, Oh, oh Hang on. Dan remembered the many things the Lone Ranger had taught him. And from Toto, he had learned how to jump from the back of one running horse to another. Giving no thought to the tremendous risk he was taking, the boy raced alongside one of the horses of the team, and gauging the time and distance, he lurched sideways from Victor's back, getting a firm grasp on the collar of the runaway horse. I've got to break it! For a moment, it seemed that the boy was going to slip and fall under the wheels. Then, with an extra surge of strength, he pulled himself to the runaway's back and grasped the line. Oh! Hold, hold there! Hold! Hold! Easy there. Steady. Easy. They'll be all right now, ma'am. Easy, fella. Oh, I can't thank you enough. You, you're just a boy. I can't imagine you doing such a wonderful thing. For a while, I, I thought I wasn't going to make it. Oh, a snake on the trail frightened the team. I, I might have been killed if you hadn't stopped them. What's your name? Dan Reed, ma'am. I'm Betty Wilson from the Bar Y Ranch. Oh, yes. I, I know where the Bar Y is. It's a big spread. Oh, my mother and father will want to meet you, Dan. Anyway, I'm a little nervous about driving on alone. I've never driven this particular team before. Will you ride along with me to the ranch? Well, I... Oh, please do, as a favor to me. I should say, as an added favor after what you've just done. I know Dad will want to reward you. Well, well, I couldn't take a reward for helping someone like that, Miss Wilson. But I will ride along with you if you're really frightened. Oh, believe me, Dan... I really am. All right, then I'll go. Here, Victor. Oh, what a gorgeous horse. I'm very proud of Victor. Steady, fella. Hey. Shall we go now, ma'am? All right. Get up there. Come on, Victor. A 
short time later, Betty Wilson and Dan reined up in front of the pretentious ranch house of the Bar Y Sprint. Hold, hold it, sir. Hold it. Steady. Steady, boy. I'll help you down, Miss Wilson. Oh, my, what a gallant you are for such a young fellow. Well, Betty, did she get back all right? I told you that was a good team. Oh, but I won't ride that team again, Dan. Why not? Say, who's the boy? I'm Dan Reed, sir. The team became frightened by a snake on the trail and ran away across the prairie. Dan heard me screaming and came to help me. He stopped the team and probably saved my life, Dad. You mean this slip of a boy? I can hardly believe it. But it's true. It was the bravest thing I've ever seen anyone do. The way he jumped from his horse to the back of one of the runaways. I persuaded him to ride along home with me. I really was afraid to come alone after what happened. Well, now, seems like I owe you a vote of thanks, Daniel, for what you've done. Well, come along inside, and I'll make my thanks more substantial with some cash. No, thank you, sir. I don't do favors for people for money. Well, well, that's a hot one on me. I knew you'd get a surprise if you offered to reward Dan. I think he's a very unusual person. He sure is. Most folks I know won't make a move unless they know they get paid for it, no matter what it is. Oh, Dad, you know that isn't so. Oh, yes, it is, too. There's your mother on the porch. I want her to meet up with this youngster. Martha, come down here a minute. What do you think, Jim? Who's the boy? Meet up with Dan Reed. This is my wife, Daniel. How do you do, ma'am? How are you, Dan? Betty tells me this young maverick stopped the runaway team and saved her life, like as not. Betty, are you all right? Of course I am. Thanks to Dan. I just want you to meet someone who did something for a Wilson and then refuses to take money for what he's done. Just such a thing to say. You think that's all people think about. (laughs) I'm glad Dan's able to prove to you that some people don't do things just for money. I guess Daniel's an unusual kind of person, then. I'll still keep counting on money instead of people's kind hearts to pull me and the bar way through. Yes, sir. Will you stay to supper, Daniel? No, thank you, Mr. Wilson. I have to get back. My friends will be waiting for me. I hope you'll come back to see us, Dan. Oh, yes, Dan, do. And you make it real soon. Thank you, ma'am. I'd better go now. I have to go to town for a few supplies. Yeah. Easy, fellow, steady. I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Bye, Dan. Bye. Come on, Victor. After riding on into town for the supplies, Dan returned to the camp where the Lone Ranger and Tonto were waiting. Dan told his friends what had happened. That was a very risky thing you did, Dan, but I'm proud of you. Dan, plenty brave, Kimasabi. I didn't think of what might happen. I just knew somebody needed help, and I did what I could. I see. You say Mr. Wilson wanted to give you money for having saved his daughter? Yes, sir. Him not know Dan very well. I wouldn't want Dan to take money for helping others. Mr. Wilson should have known better. Well, Mr. Wilson says people don't do anything through kindness, but only because they hope to get money for what they do for anyone else. That's not true. Oh, of course it isn't, Otto. Wilson has a lot to learn. I've heard of Wilson. He won't accept favors from his neighbors, nor will he do favors for them. He's not very popular around Mm, here. That's right. I guess he's that way because he has a lot of money. He said today that he counts on money and not on people's kind hearts to pull him through. Wilson underestimates his neighbors. Puts too much faith in the power of his money. Someday he'll learn his lesson, Dan. Oh, his daughter Betty and Mrs. Wilson aren't like that. I like them both. I'm glad to hear they're not like Wilson. His attitude keeps him from having many friends. That's right. Wilson's foreclosed on a lot of the small ranches surrounding his land. Has bought up some of the other places. He'd like to own the Triple X Ranch south of his spread. But so far, Jed Willis won't sell out. Wilson already has plenty of land and cattle. Yes, I know. Well, let's start supper. It's almost sundown. Later, we'll ride over near the Bar Y spread and show Dan just how big it is. Meantime, Jess Wilson had gone into town to the bank. He returned to the Bar Y and entered the ranch house. Yes, I see you got back. It's any time for supper. 
What's in the bag you have? Cash, Martha. Lots of it. $60,000 in cash that I just brought from the bank. Oh, Dad, why did you bring so much money home? It's too risky to have it around. It won't be around long, Betty. I think I got Jed Willis where I can make him come to terms. He needs cash. And the bank turned him down on loan. <laughs> He's already in too deep. You mean you're going to lend Mr. Willis the money? Not on your life. I'm riding over there the first thing in the morning and offering to buy him out, lock, stock, and barrel. When he sees that cash, I think he'll sell. But, Jess, the triple X is worth a great deal more, isn't it? Maybe so. But I'll get it for 60000 You wait and see. As soon as I lock this cash in the cabinet in the bedroom, I'll be ready to eat. So you better get the bills on the table. <laughs> Later that evening, Jess Wilson rose from the supper table and spoke to his wife. Hey, Marty, I want you to come with me in the buckboard for a little while. Where are we going, Jess? It's still light enough to see, and I want to take you over and show you how getting the triple X spread will give us the biggest stretch of range land hereabouts. You haven't bought it yet, Dad. Why don't you wait and show Mother the land after Mr. Willis agrees to sell it to you? Nope. I want to go look at it now. Get your bonnet on, Martha, and hustle up before it gets too dark for us to see much, eh? Just as you say, Jess. Won't take us too long, I hope. The cook has gone to town and we have the dishes to do yet. Oh, I'll wash them, Mother, and then I'll lie down until you get back. I don't like being alone in the ranch house with all that money here, though. Uh, now, don't go to worrying, Betty. Nobody but the bank and you and your mother know about it. Are you ready, Martha? Yes, Jess. I'm all ready. Come on, then. It won't take me a jiffy to get the horses hitched. See you later, buddy. Meantime, having finished their supper at the camp, the Lone Ranger with Tonto and Dan set out on their horses along the trail that followed the boundary line of the Bar Y Ranch. All that land is part of the Bar Y, Dan. Or as you can see. It's a mighty big spread, isn't it? Not right, Dan. Right around the bend in the trail ahead, Dan, is one of... The... Uh-oh. There comes a buckboard around the bend. Too late for us to get out of sight. Hey, it's Mr. and Mrs. Wilson. Oh, sir. Oh, 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 I got my gun pointed right at you, Mash Man. Don't any of you make a move. Why, look, Jess. Isn't that the boy, Dan, who came to the house with Betty today? Uh, that's right, Mrs. Wilson. These are my friends. Funny for a boy like you to be riding around with an outlaw, sir. But he isn't an outlaw, honest. That's right. I wear this mask for a reason. But I assure you I'm not an outlaw, Mr. Wilson. Of course, Jess, since Dan speaks for you. Mother, even though the boy did help Betty today, I ain't taking any chances. How do I know he didn't watch me when he was in town today? He said he was going there. I didn't know you went to town, Mr. Wilson. Why should I want to watch you? Because I had some business that might interest an hombre with a mask on. That's why. Evidently, you're hard to convince. Dan probably saved your daughter's life today. You might at least take his word. I tell you, I'm not going now, to... Now, Jess, don't act foolish. I'm sure Dan's friends are all right. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. Well, maybe I am a bit hasty, but mark my words, mister... If I find you snooping around our ranch house, it won't go well with you. Now, I suggest you turn around and ride back the way you came. Now, see here, Wilson, oh, I... Hey, Wasabi, somebody coming, riding hard. Yes, coming from the direction of Wilson's ranch. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, whoa. my foreman, Jim. Jim, I just... Well, have... hold up, I'm... It isn't I'll... hold up, Jim. Put away your gun. Oh, all right. But you better come quick, boss. The ranch house is on fire. What's it coming after you? The ranch house is on fire. Yes. Boys are fighting it, but it's got a good start. Great guns, you... My money! And Betty, Jess, she was resting in the bedroom. Well, there's no time to lose. Maybe we can help. Let's go. One, two, three. Get him up. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. When the foreman from the Bar Wire Ranch came with the news that the ranch house was on fire, Wilson's first thought was of the money he had left there. When the Lone Ranger heard Mrs. Wilson speak of Betty, he offered to help. Meanwhile, outside the burning ranch house, a crowd of cowhands were striving hard to put out the fire. A long line was formed to the nearby well, and buckets were passed along with little effect. Uh, it's getting out of control. Uh, Jim said nobody was inside. He went after the boss. Uh, here comes somebody now. Hey, it's Jed Willis from the Triple X. Who? Who the hell? Where's Wilson? I don't know. Went out in the buckboard with the missus. Jim went after him. I saw the flames from the trail. Sure is a bad fire. Don't know what I can do to help. Oh, here comes the boss now. Got some others with him. Holy Moses, one of them's mask. Hi, Jess. Looks like that fire's beyond control. I've got to get inside. I just have to. Wait, you can't make it, Wilson. Hey, who's the mask man? Uh, Never mind him. That fire's all I'm worried about. Men, men, has anyone seen Betty? Yeah, no, ma'am. But I don't reckon she's inside. We would have heard her yelling. She must be around someplace helping. Oh, I've got to make sure. I'm going to look around, Jed. That bucket brigade isn't doing any good, boss. You just have to stand and watch it burn down, I reckon. No, not me. I'm going inside. Oh, oh, my ankle. Here, I'll help you up. Oh, I guess I turned my ankle up. I can't stand on it. Lean on me. Fire burned plenty hard now. Yeah, no way to save that ranch house now. Now, look. Listen, everybody. I'll give $5,000 to the one who goes into the back bedroom and brings out the bag that's in the cabinet there. $5,000? wonder what's in that bag. Nobody could risk going in. You might as well forget that bag, Wilson. Nobody's going to risk his life to bring out your money. Don't talk like a fool. I would have gone if I hadn't turned my ankle... You, Jed Willis, you need money. I'll make it 10000 if you go in after it. Don't attempt it, Willis. Don't worry, I won't. If it's just a bag of money you're worrying about, Jess, let it burn. If a man not alive, there's $60,000 in cash in that bag. Six? If you go after it, I'll, I'll give you half. He'd be a fool to try it. Come on, fellow Dan. We'll go around and help with water on the barn. Ah. How's about it, Jed? Think what that would mean to you, all that money. It's too risky, Wilson. I don't want money that bad. Yeah. Right, he'd be a fool to go in for any amount. I wouldn't do it, I can tell you. Jim! Jim! No, don't take oh, on, Martha. can't Will find you? Betty anywhere. Oh, sh- Nobody's seen her at all. You mean your daughter? Yes, Mr. Willis. When we left a while ago, she was doing the dishes. And she was going to lie down a well, while. Now, stop worrying, Martha. Betty's around someplace. She'd have been that. inside, but I heard her yelling for help so long ago. What's bothering me is that 60000 You think of it. 60,000 in cash going up in flames. What were you doing with so much cash in the house, Jess? Where are you hey, boss, I was just talking to the cook around back. He says he's sure Miss Betty's still inside. Uh, but she must be overcome by smoke. Oh, Jess! Jim, Jack, he should, he let me go, Ed. My ankle. Get to her, somebody. She'll be killed. No one could get in there now, boss. There's no use trying. The flames are too fierce. Betty, oh, my little girl. Please, please, oh. somebody do something. I'll go after her, Jess. Let's hope I can make it. I'll get her if it's at all possible. Hey, Jed Willis is going after her. Yeah, but he wouldn't go for all that money. Oh, he's got to make it. He's just got to save Betty. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who had gone around to the back of the burning ranch house to help, were returning to the front when they saw someone leave the group and run into the flaming ranch house. At first, the Lone Ranger thought Jess Wilson had gone in to save his money. Then he saw Mr. Wilson still standing with the group. The Lone Ranger, followed by Tonto, broke into a run and hurried to Wilson. Who went in there? Jed Willis. He wouldn't go for the money, but when he heard Betty was in there... Betty in there? They'll be trapped. Betty, poor Mr. Willis. Oh, 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 Betty. Oh, Dad, isn't it terrible? Well, we, we thought you were trapped inside the house. Well, I decided to take a little ride. I saw the flames and smoke from down the trail. And Willis went in there for nothing. Oh, mask man. Well, no time for explaining that now. Jed Willis thought you were trapped inside. Oh. He went in after you. Oh, Dad, he'll never get out. He's calling for help. Willis is trapped. Oh. I'm going in try to get him out. No, it'll mean the death of both of us. I'll take that chance. He'll be lost in that fire, too. Oh, Jess. <laughs> they can't get out the back. The front door's the only way out now. No one answered Jim's remark, but they shivered inwardly as they watched the flames creep around the open front door and flare up over the porch roof. It seemed impossible that anyone could escape from such a flaming inferno. Martha Wilson moved her lips in silent prayer, and Jess Wilson stood with drawn face and dry lips, watching and waiting with the rest. Suddenly, an awful sound struck their ears. 
The main rope is ready to fall in. Oh, yeah, they're going us now for sure. Oh, I can't bear to look at this man. Oh, look, in the doorway, the masked man's helping Willis. They'll never make it. That roof. Oh, shit. Oh, no, wait. They made it. Get to them. There they are. Hurry. A few minutes later, with the aid of many helping hands, the Lone Ranger carried the limp form of Jed Willis to a safe place and set him on the ground. Hey, do you think you'll be all right? He sure had a narrow escape. Willis has burned a bit. You need attention. Uh, me help, Kimusabi. Toto, good. Kimusabi, you plenty scorched, blackened by fire. I'm all right. I'll apply first aid to Willis. He's been overcome by the smoke. Oh, I do hope he'll be all right. I think he will, Mrs. Wilson. I suggest you send to town for a doctor. Meantime, we'll take Jed Wilson to the bunkhouse. I hope I got him out in time. We'll know in a little while. While the Lone Ranger worked unceasingly over the unconscious man, Jim was sent hurriedly to town to bring a doctor. Jess Wilson moved a little apart from the others and stood watching. From the expression on his face, no one could tell the thoughts that went through his mind. He remembered how that morning Dan Reed had risked his life to save Betty. And as he thought of the way he had spoken to the boy about it, he felt a strange touch of shame. Then his thoughts went to the money, $60,000 in cash, that was going up in smoke inside the burning ranch house. Yet neither Jed Willis nor the masked man had given it a thought. And this fact was beginning to open Wilson's eyes. He edged away from the others and sought out Dan Reed, who stood a short distance away. Oh, hello, Mr. Wilson. Hello, Daniel. I'm sure awfully sorry about your house burning down and you losing all that money. Well, thanks, son. I understand that mask hombre is a friend of yours. Is that so? Yes, sir. He did a mighty brave thing to go in after Jed like that. Mr. Willis was brave, too. He went in thinking your daughter was inside. I know, I know. I tried to get him to go after all that cash, but he wouldn't do it. Then when he thought Betty was in there... Risking your life for money is one thing, sir. But risking it to save one, someone, is another. You are a mighty wise youngster for your age, son. Thank you, sir. I... I'm sort of sorry I said the things I did this morning. I hope you forget them. Just remember I'm grateful for what you've done for Betty. I knew you didn't really mean those things you said. Golly, I hope Mr. Willis revives. I guess he swallowed a lot of that smoke. He's just got to revive, Dan. If he don't, I'll have a lot to think about the rest of my life. Yes, sir, I'm... I'm hoping mighty strong that your friend's efforts are going to bring him around. A short time later, the victim was taken into the bunkhouse, where the Lone Ranger continued to use what knowledge he had to bring Jed Willis to consciousness, while the anxious crowd watched breathlessly. Finally, Willis gasped and opened his eyes. You're all right, Willis. You're safe now. Oh, thank heaven he's come too. But your daughter Betty, I couldn't find her in there. The girl wasn't in there at all, Willis. I told the cook I was going to lie down, Dad. And then I changed my mind suddenly and left the house for a short ride. Oh, no, no, it's all right, Betty. Here's the doctor. Well, Jed Willis, looks like you and this man here tried to get yourselves burned up. I'm all right, doctor. But Jed Willis needs attention. He just regained consciousness. Hmm, I see. Well, those minor burns can be fixed all right. This masked man has been working over Willis since he was brought out unconscious. Yes, doctor. And the masked man is the one who went in after Jed Willis. I see. But it was his first aid that saved Jed's life after he was brought out of the fire. We know that. I'm all right now. I I sure thought I was gone, though, when I got in that burning house and started hunting for Betty. My foot got caught. And if it hadn't been for this masked man... Even though I wasn't in the house, Mr. Willis, the fact that you thought I was and went in to save me is something I'll always remember. Yes, if the stranger hadn't saved you, Jed, I'd never gotten over it. What I can figure out, Jed, is why you refused to go in when you could have had half of that 60000 that got burned up. But when you were told Betty was inside, you didn't hesitate to go in. I should think that would teach you a lesson, Wilson. Jed Willis refused to risk his life for money, as you would have done. But he didn't hesitate to risk it in an effort to save your daughter. Yes, that's right. 
If Betty had been in there and hadn't been saved, all the money in the world wouldn't have made up for it. And I'd feel the same way about it if you had perished in there, Jed. Yes, uh, I guess that's right, Martha. I had the wrong slant on things, I guess. And on people. I'm glad you realize it. Come, Toto. Dan's waiting outside. We'll get back to camp. Ah, uh, me come. On the way out here, Jim told me about Jed thinking that Betty was in the burning house and rushing in to save her. He told me how the masked man went in and saved Jed. You know, Doc, between him and Jed Willis, they taught me a lot. It was an expensive lesson, boss. He not only lost the ranch house, but that 60000 in cash, it too. It could have been worse, Jim. Jed, I'm not going to offer you money for what you did. No more than I would the masked man. But any time you need a loan, or I can do anything, just let me know. Thanks, Jester. I'll remember that. Oh, Dad, I'm so glad you found out how wrong you were. You spoke of Dan's friend, the math man. Now it's easy to see why that boy did what he did this afternoon and the way he acted about it. He had a fine example to follow. He sure did, I found out a few things about that masked hombre. You see, knowing what I know now, I'd expect him to do what he did. Because he's the Lone Ranger. This is a product of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs> <laughs>